part two of our steampunk journal. My first time ever trying the steampunk theme. If you missed the first part and you want to see how we got to where we are right now, I will link that for you in the description box. This is a collaboration with the Digital Collage Club. Welcome, this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So we've made our cover, we've put together some pages here with some Tim Holtz papers, we've added some butterfly wings, and now we kind of wanna add some more steampunk elements. So from these images, from the Digital Collage Club. I chose two of them and printed them on some transparent paper. So I chose this one here and the pocket watch here. And what I made out of them were these two. So these are just printed, enlarged, printed on some transparent paper. And then I did edge it with the, with the copper gilding wax. I have a similar one linked for you below. And I also put some copper accents here on the butterfly and here as well. I put some on, on the butterfly and I edged, edged it as well. So these I think are, are just fun pages to have in your journal. So I need to find a place for those. Next, I wanted to try to do something like we have in this image here. You see the key with the wings. So I think that's a lot of fun. And I actually found some keys in my stash. These came, I'm sure these came from Action again, which is the Dutch store that, we, that a lot of European countries have. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these wings out and then see on which key I think they might go best. Okay, I've cut them out and inked them up with Vintage Photo. So now let's see how that would look. <laughs> I think that's so cute. I love this. Oh, I really like this one. This one's a bit long, this one's a bit thin. I think I really love this one. Let's try to somehow put these together. How do we best do this is the question. I think I'll simply put some three in one glue because it dries fast on the tips of these wings. And that should hopefully do it. You can use a real key if you have one, of course, too. But the nice thing about having like these kind of craft keys is that they are nice and flat for your journal. So that's, that is of course nice. So there we go. I think it looks awesome. I will put some copper accents on it. I know this is surprising. <laughs> but we want to make everything work together, right? It has to be cohesive. And I thought we could add this as an embellishment onto an envelope. So I have here a coffee dyed envelope, which I have already, I've inked up the, the edges first with the vintage photo, and then I added just a bit of this copper as well. And I thought I could put this like this, and this will also help weigh the flap down, which is good. And I also found this feather, which I think would be really nice to add maybe underneath. 
I don't know if feathers are a steampunk thing, but I think it looks nice. <laughs> and it helps, I think, with the feminine touch a little bit. So we could just do that. And then I'm thinking, since we're trying to make it a little bit more feminine, why don't we try to add some lace underneath as well and see how that would look. Yes, why not, right? Okay, so I need to cut off a piece. And I will use my three-in-one glue to glue the bits down. There we are. Let's go ahead and add that to our journal. How about here? Let's make this into a belly band. So I will just glue it down on the top and the bottom. I've never done that before with an envelope actually. I will use my art glitter glue. I'm enjoying so much. This tip, this metal tip is fantastic. Okay, so that's our first steampunk embellished piece of ephemera. We can stick something in there later. Now I think it's time to tackle one of these butterfly wings to try and see how we can steampunk that up somehow. First thing I want to do is get rid of this is get rid of this uh, tape here, which we don't need because we're not gluing it on anything. And since this part is sticky now, I'm just going to take a part of a white candle and I'm gonna rub, rub over it. And now it's no longer sticky. So that's a good trick if you have anything sticky. The next thing I want to do is the same thing as we did with the golden butterfly for the cover. I'm going to rough it up. So I have my block with sandpaper here, which I got from the hardware store. And I'm just going to go around it in circles and see if I can get rid of some of the paint. I think I actually need to get rid of this because this is going to be damaged too quickly. So I will just cut it off. We don't have to worry about it. So that's the front and we'll do the same thing with the back side. So now we can see the change if we compare. This is what it was like and this is what it is now. So this is a lot better to work with now to keep, to, to grunge it up a little bit more. And this time I wanna try something a little bit different. So I have just a piece of plastic here. If you have a craft mat, that would be great. And I'm going to try, just gonna use my Distress Oxide. Add some water. and see what happens if we put this inside. <laughs> Besides getting a huge mess. <laughs> okay, so this is what we have now and I will take this to my heat gun and see what that will look, look like once it's dry. So this is what it looks like after one round of that. So it's got already some nice splattering there, but I think I want to add some more, like, like some coffee stains. So I have here 
some coffee mixture that I had in the fridge and I'm going to just press this very very lightly and slowly so that I get bigger drops okay so once again I will dry this and then do the same thing for the back side okay so I've done both sides so this is what it looks like with the splatters and I've already inked around it with my vintage photo and added the copper on the edges and now I want to add some gears to this so I was thinking what if we do something like this make them smaller and smaller like that I think that looks pretty cool and here I also wanted to add something so I have these printed out round images and I want to see which one I would like best this one would actually be cool I like that one oh the eye is cool I like the eye a lot. That's cool too. No, I... Hmm. No, I really like the eye. So I will also ink this up, put some copper around it, and then glue these elements down unless I decide to put something underneath. underneath. I found this black dye of a doily in my stash. So actually, I think this looks pretty cool too, just to frame it like that. So I will add that one as well. So I've glued everything down. I used my art glitter glue, which will of course turn transparent once everything is dried, but I see it's really strong, so very cool. So there's our eye and I want to leave the back empty so that there is journaling space. So that will go in here like this. The next idea was to do something with a with an elastic. And I thought one of these pages would be good because these are thicker and more sturdy than the bigger ones because they are they have two papers on them and so what I thought I would try to do is some of my cogwheels have these two holes on the sides so I thought why don't we so this is just a thin black elastic band like you would use in your Filofax maybe so I thought if we try to put these put it through on one side and then we wrap it around and do the same thing on the other side. Wrap it around. And then of course we need to close it somehow on the back. And I thought I have this little flower thingy here and so what I want to try to do is let's put this through because I want them to cross so I'll put one end I'll take it with my tweezers because it's easier because they have little holes in the middle so I'll put it through one hole kind of like threading a button and then I'll take the other one and I'll thread it through the opposite hole. Actually, I don't need this. And now we see how, how tight we should have this. Let's see, and then we make a knot. 
just like you would with a button. Let's see if that's tight enough. And then I thought we could even stick one of these rivet brads inside to give it the finishing touch. I think I need to stick the brad in first. So now I'm gonna try to put the glue like in between the brad and the knot. Cause I am going to be cutting that knot off and I don't want it to open. So this way now we can stick something underneath here and underneath here. So that's pretty cool. And of course we need to add some wax. Next, I thought I would do something with this die here. It's one of the Tim Holtz Alteration Thinlets. I will try to link this below as well. I think a lot of us know this die. And I used my die cut machine and I, then I put it through this 3D Tim Holtz Alterations embossing folder, which is really cool. And so this is what it looks like. So I used some brown cardstock, and so now it has this embossing, which I think is really cool. And this is the label that you can put here. So in order to define that better, of course, I'm going to edge it with this because I think the vintage photo wouldn't show here, and I think this is perfect to go around this. Maybe even to go over it a little bit so you could see the design better. Oh yes, this now actually looks like metal. Wow. Look at this. Wow, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. Forget about just the edges. This needs to look like copper. How cool is this? Wow, I cannot get enough of this. Look at this. Amazing. I'm speechless how cool this looks. So, and then I'm just going to glue the label on the bottom with my art glitter glue. And then we put some glue just around the edge here so that we can still stick things in. Okay, so there we have that. And we'll put some tags and stuff in there later. So I've already chosen some, some of the ephemera from the printouts and I've cut them out and I've, I've printed them on, on 180 gram white paper and I've inked them and already put the copper edges on each of them. So we got the light bulb actually two different kinds of light bulbs. Then we have this dress with the butterfly and, and again, I put some copper on the butterfly wings as well. Then we have this hot air balloon 
And then we have two of the little postcards. So one is this and one is this. And now we'll just put it all in here. Something like that. It's a fun interactive page as well. My next idea was to use some thin wire and to put it on this card with some some of these rivet brads. So I thought I would put four on each side and then wrap it around so maybe that would kind of look like a corset or even if it doesn't it'll have some wire and i think that would be cool we can stick something inside so to do that i need to get these brads in equally otherwise it will look awkward so i actually need to do some measuring here <laughs> so since i want four holes I'm gonna see how long the whole thing is. So that's 15 centimeters. And I need to divide it by five to get four equal distance holes. So in this case, it's easy. I just need every three centimeters, I need a hole. And the same on the other side. Yeah, I'll take the big hole of my crocodile and then just punch it where I marked it. Actually, I just remembered we're going to have the spiral going in on this side, so I need to be sure to calculate that in, so I need to move in much more on this side. So maybe about here. I'm happy I thought of that. <laughs> Okay, so we have the eight holes now, and so now I just have to put in Once all those are in, I'm going to start wrapping my wire around. I'm going to try to make a knot on the first one. This wire is thin enough, it's 0 0.3 millimeters, in case you want to know. So I'm cutting off the end. So this is what we have now. You can hardly see the wire, right? And now I'm just going to go back and forth. up again so the bottom one goes across and then we wind it back up if you don't have wire obviously you can do this with some kind of string or something as well twine but since we have this theme going on I think this is quite cool and the top one, I'm not going to cross over. I will just leave that open like this. So I will now wrap this around. A few times. I think that should be fine. And then I'll just cut off the end. there we have like a corset thing so now we can stick in an image like this this is from the kit as well and of course i'm going to link all the kits below and of course i also have discount codes for the digital collage club for the yearly membership or the lifetime membership you can find those below so this is an image i have enlarged it's from this 
print out which are the ATC cards, the Steampunk ATC cards, and it's this image that I have just enlarged. And now, and I've, I've, as you can see, I've rounded the corners, I've put the copper on the edges, and now we're going to just slide that in here. And there we go. There we have a cool tuck spot. The next thing I'd like to do is to make a coin envelope. So I've chosen this pattern and I'm going to start off by cutting the white edge away. I printed this at 80%. Once that's done, and by the way, I printed this on 180 gram cardstock, so it's a little thicker which is good for my envelope. So now I'm just going to fold one side in. I'm going to make a very easy coin envelope. Then I fold in the other side. This is going to be fairly large. Then we fold the bottom up. And the top down. Now we unfold it. And on the bottom, we cut at an angle on the middle part, both sides. So we have this trapeze shape, and then we cut off the two outer flaps. So we have this left on the bottom. And on the top, I'm gonna to do it a little bit different because I'm going to round these two corners. So I'm gonna cut straight exactly where the crease is on both sides. I am going to slant this here a little bit just because I think it looks nicer and it's easier to get out whatever is in there. So I try to do it approximately the same. And we can check when we close it. Yeah, it matches up, so that's good. And now for the top flap, I'm going to take my large corner rounder and just round those two corners. So that is a coin envelope. Before I glue everything down, I'm going to, of course, distress all the edges with my vintage photo. And once that's done, we can just glue it down. I'm going to use my art glitter glue. First the middle flap and then the bottom. For closure I want to have two cog wheels so I'll put one here and one here. And we will attach those with brads. So that means I need to mark where the center is. And then I will use my awl to punch through the holes. And this one I, I have to be sure not to punch through to the other side. So, and then I will take my brads. They are very small. Put it through the wheel and then put it through the hole. And do the same thing for the top one. It's easier to get them to get the legs apart 
if you first just separate them a little bit with the awl because otherwise that becomes very difficult. And now to close it, we could maybe even use the wire again. open it like this <laughs> I think that's a fun alternative to using a string I chose this page to stick it on now I again have to remember that I can't just put it in the middle because we need space for the wires so I will put it on the most outer edge and I will glue just the three sides so that we can also have a pocket on the top here and I will again do this with my art glitter glue just because I love it and it seems to be really strong and finally I would also like to add a closure to this a very simple one so what I thought I would do is I would take one of these bulldog clips and I already went over it with the copper wax so it has already dried it doesn't come off it's great and I've also put the copper on a piece of chain that I had so the front is going to just clasp on like this and so now we still have to secure the back side and all I thought I was going to do was to attach it with a one of the brads and I have also already put the copper on it so I will punch the hole I'm going to eyeball this I'm using the bigger hole punch and I'm eyeballing where the center is because it doesn't really matter And then we'll put the brad through the jump ring and then put the brad through the, pa the last page. And then I'll probably cover, cover this up somehow. So there's the chain attached and then we can just undo it like that. Okay, this is a bit difficult because the cinch is, is so big. So I just realized I've already made one mistake and because I've put the brads in already, I can't really move this because, yeah. <laughs> so that means I will, because this has, it punches 12 holes at once. Of course you can punch things that are larger, but then you have to move your page, which I can't do because of the brads. So what I'm gonna do instead, 12 is, is fine. That's gonna work fine in here. So I'm just, I currently have, wires for 14 holes so I'm just going to get rid of two so it's just it's going to be like this which is fine so that means now I have to punch each page and I will I think I'll do that individually just to make sure because they're quite thick I'm gonna have to lift this handle and that's gonna be right in the camera. <laughs> that's why I'm trying to show you without. Basically, I need to find out where the middle is. And then there is an arrow here that shows you 
no, you can't really see. The, the center is here and then I will align it and then I will just punch the pages. Okay, and I do this now for every single page. I've punched all the pages and I've actually taken out three because I just think it's too, it's too bulky and it's going to get more bulky with more things that I add. And one advice, if you don't have a cinch yet or if you don't use it often, you need to practice on a separate piece of paper before you put it in your project because a lot of things can go wrong. <laughs> it's not as intuitive as you might think, especially if you need, if you have longer pages. So you need to practice a little bit. Now I realized I can't put this through yet because I still have three more butterfly wings. So I also put the holes through those, of course. I have three more half wings. And if I wanna keep those in, and I just realized I hold this one on the wrong side. <laughs> because the holes are in like this and this is upside down. How cool. I will see what I will do about that. <laughs> These are the things that happen while you're filming. Actually, I wasn't even filming. <laughs> anyway, I will see what to do about that. So I need to, yeah, see, I still have some of these wings and I haven't done anything with them yet. And if I put them in now, I won't be able to work with them easily. So I will do something with these off camera and then I'll show you what I did and then we'll put the rest together. So my wings are done. I kept it pretty simple. What I did was I used my die cut that I've, shown before or I've shown maybe in the first part. So I will link this below. This is from AliExpress. And I used, I got this paper pad. This was gifted to me. I don't know if you can still get it. It seems to be from the US because it has a, a dollar price here. So this is pretty cool paper actually. Let me, so I used this one and let me just give you a flip through. They are, some of them are really cool. A lot of, or some gold foiling. I have no idea how old this is. So I used the bigger part here. I glued it on and then I edged with the copper one more time where those parts are. And then for these two, I just used two of the cut off parts. This one looks different in the color because I first put glue on the wrong side and then when I wiped it off and inked it again, it just became a lot darker. Yeah, so those are my wings. So I will put them in here again and then we can finally start putting the journal together. We are back with our cinch and now we're using the side part here. So I'm taking my wire and I am lining it up to fit nicely in the notches. And then I'm going to take my pages and from the bottom up, I'm going, actually it doesn't matter, I can also go this way, but I'll just do it from the last page. I'll start and I will just thread them into the wire like this. Oh, and by the way, I managed to gently peel off the feather with the key and then to glue it on the other way around. So everything's okay. <laughs> And now we take this whole thing off 
And now all we need to do is press it together with the back side of the cinch. So this is now the back part and here you can see a scale of depending on how thick your wire is and I actually don't know. <laughs> so then you could you could turn it here to switch it to the thickness that you have. I'm just going to put it at a lower one because I can always then decide how far to push down. So all you do is you put this in between here and then you push down to close the wires. And if I didn't push far enough, I can just do it again. Just gotta make sure it stays in there. Yep, and that will do it. So that's closed. Okay, let's do a quick flip through of the current status. What I will do is I will keep working on this because this is in no way finished. But since it's already part two, in part three, I will show you then a flip through of the final journal and everything I did in it. I hope this gave you some new ideas for your own journals, whether they are steampunk or not. And uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please subscribe if you haven't, if you wanna see more and give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Bye.